Thank you, Senator Duckworth. Uh, let me recognize Senator Scott, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Joe Miller, why would you, as the sitting chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, talk to a reporter that's writing a book about a prior administration? Why would that be in part of your job description? Well, as Senator Blackburn said earlier, um, I, I deal with the media routinely, two, three, four times a week. I'm talking to the media and the media, whether it's books, uh, TV news, reporters, we have a lot of media here. Uh, I think it's very, very important to make sure that senior officials talk to the media in all of its various forms in order to explain what we're doing. That you're not, you're, that's, but you're talking about what happened in the past. Sure, past. I mean, why past. would you do that? I mean, what, what's the upside to the American public of you talking to, you have I all this sensitive information, Sure. you have a full-time job, and then you go out and talk about the prior administration. I just don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. If, if the media wants to ask you about what we're doing right now, something like that, I get it. But the prior administration, why would you do that? I think it's important to make sure that the American people are transparent with, the, with what our government does, that's all. Nothing more complicated than that. So it's been reported you discussed sensitive information, including private conversations you had with the prior president with these reporters. How is that consistent with your testimony today that you won't talk about any conversations you've had with the president you only talk about what your position is, but it's been reported that with, by these reporters that you have talked, you've told them exactly the conversations you had with the prior president. Does that, that seem inconsistent? I'm not, I'm not so sure about what they're reporting, about what I said, and uh, private conversations, et cetera. I, I don't share private conversations with the president, with this president, former president, any president, period. So what these reporters are saying is completely I, untrue. I'm, I'm not going to say whether they're what, I don't even know what they're written. I haven't read their books. But I can tell you that I don't share my personal conversations with the president, period. So Senator Sullivan was asking about this conversation about whether you're going to, you would give prior notice to the military communist China that America's going to attack. So is it, is it your testimony you will not ever give a heads up to the communist Chinese military if the president of the United States, it doesn't matter who the president is, that you're reporting to is ready to attack? Of course I wouldn't. I and mean, you don't feel like you did that, you, you said no, that at all? No, the, the context we were talking about, Senator, there was a significant degree of intelligence, and I think I put the unclassified versions in that timeline. And it's not insignificant, it's not like one report or two. It's an entire body of intelligence that led us to believe that the Chinese were misinterpreting our actions and misinterpreting what was happening inside our own country, politically, uh, and they were, they were assessing a situation that was leading to escalation, possible incident, and it would have been quite dangerous. So Secretary Esper and I met, uh, and we met with other members of the team, uh, and we developed an engagement plan to ensure that we engaged at various levels. Secretary Esper had his uh, Daz D do it, and, and he asked me to do it, so I did that. And I made a call, and the theme was to de-escalate, to lower tensions. Uh, and I believe that is a faithful and loyal execution of my constitutional responsibilities. And I believe that was faithfully executing the intent of the President of the United States at the time. Because I knew, I knew with certainty that President Trump was not going to attack the Chinese just out of the blue. It wasn't going to happen. Um, and if things did happen, uh, there would be periods of tension calls going back and forth. So I have one more question. Sorry. It's, it's been reported that you had, you had concerns about the prior president's fitness for office. Do you have a, do you have a criteria for, for presidents? And do you have, have you reviewed the existing president, President Biden, for his fitness for office? Or do you think that way? Do you, do you, have, do you think you have the ability to, uh, to have a right to, to make those decisions? And have you been doing that? I don't, I'm not qualified to evaluate the mental fitness or the health of a former president, present president, or anybody else or anybody in this room. That's not my job. That's not what I do, and that's not what I did. There was a lot of speculation going on, uh, but I don't evaluate people's uh, health and fitness. That's not my job. Okay. How did you feel when President Biden attacked the willingness of the Afghan military to fight? How did that uh, make you feel? How did I feel? Yeah, when he, when he went and attacked... He, he said the, he, he didn't think the Afghan military had the willingness to fight. How does that make you, as a, as a military officer, how does that make you feel? I mean, somebody that you put your, I think your life Afghan on the line. I think the Afghan military sacrificed, I mean, there's 60 or 70,000 Afghans that were killed yeah. in action over the last 20 years defending their country. And I thought, and I personally am witness uh, to units that fought, fought well and fought bravely and gave their life for their country. 
But I would also say at the same time that it, over the summer in those 11 days, the vast majority of the Afghan units put their weapons down uh, and they surrendered without a fight. Kabul was taken with a couple hundred guys on motorcycles and there wasn't a shot fired. So my question to myself is how did we miss that? What happened? How did that happen? And that's one of the things we've got to figure out. How is it that an army of that size, that they, they were trained, they were manned, they were equipped, et cetera, how is it that the, the factors of will and leadership and morale just collapsed like that? And we have to answer that to ourselves. But the Afghan army fought for their country for 20 years and lost a lot of people. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Senator Sullivan. Uh, Senator Scott, excuse me. Uh, Senator Rosen, please. 